Welcome back friends. So, we have been talking about American uh, novelists and then we have also been talking about American dramatists and poets. So, one of the greatest art, uh, uh, dramatists of all time, American dramatists uh, of all time is Arthur Miller who was born in 1915 and who uh, died in 2005. So, um, the, some of the terms that uh, we are going to refer to with reference to Arthur Miller, one is the group theatre okay? and what was group theatre and what was federal theatre project, these are the things that we should be concerned with and then the major works of Arthur Miller, life and time and his life and his times also. Along with O'Neill and Tennessee Williams, we have already done some practice uh, ex uh, uh, extracts from the, their plays. He is the most influential American playwright of the 20th century. He was born in a Jewish family and his father was a manufacturer of ladies hats. He had an elder brother and a younger sister and one of the uh, most formative influences on him especially on his personal life was the great depression which changed the fortunes of the Miller family. Um, at, uh, when he grew up a little older uh, he uh, went to uh, he entered the University of Michigan in 1934 where he um, won awards for playwriting. He wrote several plays dealing with family relationships okay, which later on uh, you know we sort of anticipated many of his later plays. He graduated in English in 1938 and then he returned to New York and joined the Federal Theatre Project where he also wrote a script for radio programs. Now, you have to know that the group theatre was formed in New York by the trinity of Harold Klurman, Cheryl Crawford and Lee Strasberg in 1931. The group was uh, an attempt to create a theatre collective, a company of players trained in a unified style and dedicated to presenting contemporary plays. Members of the group tended to hold left wing political views and wanted to produce plays that dealt with important social issues and concerns that is important to remember. While working at the group theatre, Lee Strasberg developed the famous theory of the method acting which was based on the ideas of the Russian director Konstantin Stanislavski. This is a method of training and rehearsal for actors which bases a performance upon inner emotional experience a very complex theory. Many great uh, actors um, uh, on stage as well in cinema they are the practitioners of this uh, branch of acting. Okay. Uh, the group theatre uh, disbanded in 1941 after the second world war most of the members of the group were investigated by the House Un-American Activities Committee, the dreaded HUAC. Okay. So, this is one another term that you should know HUAC, House Un-American Activity Committee, which targeted many people, it is like a soft target, the artists, the filmmakers, the writers. Some of the famous targets were uh, people like Alaya Kazan, Clifford Audits and Lee J. Cobb and uh, unfortunately they testified and named other members of left wing groups. Those who were named were blacklisted and those who refused to name names were also blacklisted. However, in 1940 uh, going back to Arthur Miller, he married a Catholic girl Mary Slattery. Uh, and he had two children. His first play to appear on Broadway was The Man Who Had All the Luck, which is sort of loosely based on Henrik Ibsen's The Master Builder. The Man Who Had All the Luck is a 1944 play. He also wrote his first novel, Focus, a 1945 novel, which was about anti Semitism. You have to remember the you know the, there were waves of hatred for the Jews even in America okay? and 
the play de uh, the sorry the novel addresses that issue uh, his uh, first success came in uh, 1947 with all my sons all my sons structurally uh, follows the conventional Aristotelian construction of plot, it has unity of time, place and action and uh, uh, it is quite similar to a Greek tragedy, the conflict is between father and his sons resulting in the death of his father. Miller's next great play and one of the greatest plays ever is Death of a Salesman which was uh, performed in 1949 and uh, it brought him everlasting fame. The recent um, Iranian film uh, is a um, salesman okay, is also sort of you know a group of it is about or it refers to Arthur Miller's death of a salesman. It is about a group of Irani, uh, Iranian theatre people who are trying to stage death of a salesman. The play also won him his first and only Pulitzer Prize for the best play and it, uh, its uh, protagonist is Willie Lohman and uh, Miller famously uses expressionistic theatrical devices which was so successfully used earlier by uh, Tennessee Williams in A Streetcar Named Desire. You should also know what is expressionism. Um, now, this expressionist movement of course, uh, it started with uh, painting like most uh, major movements, but in drama uh, this is started in Germany with playwrights like George Kaiser and Ernest Toller using this device in their plays. The plots and uh, stories of the expressionist films often dealt with madness, insanity, betrayal and um, uh, other topics like uh, you know it is not like a standard action adventure kind of thing, they were more um, introverted and intellectual kind of uh, plays and expressionism was uh, gave them the right kind of atmosphere, the right device to handle the theme. Uh, in cinema it was famously used in uh, particularly the last laugh, the cabinet of uh, Dr. Caligari. Okay, and these were um, uh, and also Nosferatu. So, these were all made by the German directors like uh, Fritz Lang and F. W. Murnau. You should also know that there is a painting called The Scream by Edward Munch, which um, clearly shows that what is the uh, you know effect on mankind on uh, um, of unbridled materialism and rapid and unbridled uh, mechanization and urbanization. Expressionism in other words is a practice in which subconscious thoughts or the subjective or inner realities of life are presented by a wide range of non-naturalistic techniques. Eugene O'Neill in The Emperor Jones and the Hairy Ape successfully uses this device. Of course, Tennessee William uh, popularized it with streetcar named Desire and then Elmer Rees in the adding machine which was uh, performed in 1923 satirizes the growing regimentation of man in the mechanical or machine age through the life and death of um, the hero Mr. Zero. So, the dominant theme was horror over urban life and apocalyptic visions of the collapse of civilization. Miller's next great success following uh, uh, death of a salesman was the crucible 1953, which is based upon the events uh, of 1692, which led to the Salem witch trials, which was a series of hearings before local magistrates to prosecute over 150 false people who were falsely accused of practicing witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts in 1692. So, uh, uh, the play was written, uh, he set the play in 1692 in Salem, but it was a sort, a sort of you know allegory of the times of McCarthyism.
So, as I told you earlier on that uh, McCarthyism, HUAC, these were very important um, sort of events that forged or that informed Miller's uh, plays of that period. So, uh, the crucible was written in the early 50s during the time of McCarthyism when the US government blacklisted the so called accused communists. Miller himself was questioned by the House and American uh, Activities Committee and the play was first performed on Broadway in 1953. Here is a slide that I want you to look at and this is I am quoting Miller. He, Miller on HUAC. In 1956, the House Un-American Activities Committee HUAC subpoenaed me. I was cited for contempt of Congress for refusing to identify writers I had met at one of the two communist writers meetings I had attended many years before. By then, the tide was going out for HUAC and it was finding it more difficult to make front pages. However, the news of my forthcoming ma marriage to Marilyn Monroe was too tempting to be passed. That our marriage had some connection with my being subpoenaed was confirmed when Chairman Walters of the HUAC sent word to Joseph Rao, my lawyer, that he would be inclined to cancel my hearing if Miss Monroe would consent to have a picture taken with him. Also look at this another quotation from Miller, take a look at it. I think it may be, however personal it may appear, Kazan's testimony created a far greater shock than anyone else's. Lee Jacobs' similar testimony and Jerome Robbins' cooperation seemed hardly to matter. It may be that Kazan had been loved more than any other, that he had attracted far greater affection from writers and actors with whom he had worked. And so, what was overtly a political act was sensed as a betrayal of love. And this is Arthur Miller on Elia Kazan. You should remember that uh, the crucible and this kind of question may be asked for your exams was adapted for film twice uh, and particularly by Jean-Paul Sartre as the 1957 film Les Sorciers du Salem and then Miller himself adapted it for the 1996 film The Crucible which had uh, Daniel Day-Lewis and Winona Ryder acting in it. And then in 1955 there was a double bill with a memory of two Mondays which is a sort of uh, semi autobiographical play and also a view from the bridge which is like his uh, a Greek play okay, with all the melodrama of uh, incest and betrayal. Um, Miller married uh, Marilyn Monroe uh, and uh, uh, after uh, the marriage they went on uh, to live in Roxbury, Connecticut. Miller wrote The Misfits for Marilyn Monroe. Okay, he wrote the screenplay which is about three cowboys and a girl. The girl's character is also loosely based on Marilyn Monroe. He wrote After the Fall in 1964, the title derives from the Bible and also Albert Camus's existentialist novel The Fall and, the, and After the Fall is also notable for its autobiographical theme as well as innovative techniques. Um, it brought back Alaya Kazan and Arthur Miller again after a long break. In the 60s and 70s, um, Miller wrote a very successful play Incident at Vichy based on the Holocaust in France and then also The Price and The Price is a very popular play which is staged over and again everywhere including in our own country which is about an, an uneasy relationship between brothers. So, his own uneasy relationship between his own brother Kermit Miller. In the 70s, he wrote The American Clock which is uh, again semi autobiographical about his experiences of the depression years and then he wrote his the biblical play which is a satire called creation of the world. Miller was the president of Penn that is Penn Society Poets 
playwrights, essays, novelists and uh, he also took very active part in supporting writers in exile such as Ole Soyanka, Alexander, Solzhenitsyn and later also Salman Rushdie. Uh, in the 80s and the 90s, he wrote The Archbishop's Ceiling uh, which is based on writers in exile in communist Czech Republic. He also wrote Elegy for a Lady and some kind of uh, love story in something called 2 by AM which was a double bill in 1983. He wrote Danger Memory in 1987 which is about the uh, unreliable role of memory. So, that is his memory play and he then next he wrote Write Down Mount Morgan which is a 1991 play followed by Broken Glass which is again a play about um, the holocaust. He wrote short stories and also another novel called Homely Girl and then of course, his great autobiography which is called Time Bends which was published in 1987. Some before his death some of his last plays were Mr. Peter's Connections in 1999 and then he also wrote uh, Resurrection Blues in 2002 which is a satire on media and its materialistic values. And last play was Finishing the Picture which appeared in 2004 just a few years uh, few months before his death which is again a Marilyn play and uh, uh, it is about uh, a writer who is unsuccessfully trying to complete a screenplay. So, it is based on his experience with Marilyn during the filming of The Misfits. Miller's greatest legacy is democratization of tragedy and uh, democratization of the ideal tragic hero um, and uh, this uh, and his play and his uh, uh, comments on what is a tragedy is uh, uh, are worth noting because he directly cha challenges Aristotle's concepts of ideal tragic hero. See remember I, um, for Aristotle I, an ideal tragic hero is someone who is of noble stature and birth and grandeur with uh, one tragic flaw, fatal law, flaw. However, for Miller this is not the case and he says even a common man is apt to be the subject of a tragedy. So, democratization of tragedy is one of his greatest uh, you know contribution to dramaturgy. So, thank you very much and uh, we will be doing more on uh, uh, American dramatists in our ne next class.